Here he is, ladies and gents, Isaiah McKenzie. In the house, many names, many names. Face of the franchise, Lil Dirty. Any, any, any new names that we don't know? No, I mean, uh, the Muscle Hamster, but I... Muscle <laughs> Hamster, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doug, Doug Martin for the Bucks was the original Muscle Hamster, but it's been a few years. Yeah, so. I mean, I guess if Josh says it, then that's yeah. what it is. Kinda. Maybe we can get that to stick. Do you, do you like that more than being called, you know, unsanitized? I'd rather be unsanitized. You know, just a little dirty, just kind of... Yeah. Yeah, I think Muscle Hamster, we'll go no, with No, 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 Lil oh. Dirty's fine. Okay. <laughs> Hey, well, everybody, thank you so much for, for coming out. Um, season two, last season was a lot of fun, Isaiah. Yeah, it, was. it was a lot of fun, but I feel like you're a starting slot receiver now. So we're going to be talking about touchdowns and wins yeah. more than, you know, working through benchings and drop all that. <laughs> so it's, it's going to be a great time. <laughs> yes, it will. Yes, it will. Uh, how, how's everything going, first of all? How are you feeling out of this first game? It was... Uh, a beatdown of epic proportions, a curb stomping, if you will. That was that was something else last night. That was pretty fun. You know what I'm saying? The, in the beginning of the game, it was got a little shaky, but um, it was pretty fun. You know, Josh had fun. All the guys had fun. So I feel like for the most part, uh, we went in, did what we had to do, and just got the job done. But for the most part, it was fun. Also, I should, I should say, too, this show, I mean, the purpose of it, right, we want to give people a look behind the curtain, the ups, the downs go beyond the press conference, beyond the locker room. Isaiah is about as real as it gets in a game where a lot of stuff is kind of overly sanitized. So we appreciate it, Isaiah. That Thanks so much for doing it again. No problem. Uh, so how do, how do you handle these expectations? Let's start there. I mean, you look at the odds in Vegas, which I'm, I'm sure players really don't, but everybody's yeah. betting the Bills to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I, I can't remember it being this extreme ever in my life, in anybody's life. So as a player, smack dab in the middle of that world where it's, it's kind of Super Bowl or bust in the minds mm -hmm. of fans here, how do, you, how do you even deal with that? How do you cope with that? Uh, we don't. You know, so we just, <laughs> we just let it be. You know, play, practice, you know, take it a day at a time, an hour at a time, and just take it a game at a time. And I feel like for the most part, that's what we do each and every year. Um, McDermott preaches that, so that's what we do as a team, just take it a day at a time, a game at a time. Because it's still, we got 16 more, what, 17 more games in a bye week. So we got a long way to go. It's a long season. I mean, you, you know that better than anybody. I, I definitely want to get into, like, picking up where we left off last year. Because the last time you guys heard from Isaiah, we didn't know if you were going to be with the Buffalo Bills in 2022. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. it, it was looking a little dicey. I mean, yeah. you, you deserve a role in an offense. We didn't know if it was going to happen here in Buffalo. So we'll get into, like, how you manifested that how you made it happen but first 31 10 la did you did you guys expect that did you expect to just uh, clean the floor with these um, guys the, the, the defending super bowl champs we just went in there and said you know let's play our, let's put our best foot forward and like let's play our best game even though in the beginning it wasn't our best game but um i just feel like we just like hey let's go out there let's play free Let's get the job done, no matter, you know, good or bad. Let's just come out with a W. So that was, a, that was kind of the, the whole thing McDermott preached. But, like, the, the, the psychology of being the, the favorite. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like with Sean McDermott, Brandon Bean, even Jot, like, the, le the leaders of the team, you guys have been able to play up this underdog role, mm -hmm. right? Like, and you, because the Bills, let's face it, you know, four Super Bowl losses, Music City Miracle, 17-year playoff drought. There's this, there's like this uh, in, inferiority complex where it's like we, we can't have nice, you can play that underdog role uh -huh. internally, like everybody's counting us out. But now you're the top dog, like in the minds of a lot of people. Now, could you lean into that? Like, all right, nobody can hang with us. Like when we have our foot on your throat, like we're gonna beat you 31 to 10 in your house. What, like, what, how do you even describe the mindset of the team right now? Um, for the most part, it's just like we got to hunt. Like we know what we need to do. We know what needs to be done. And we're going to get it done no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Good or bad. And like, we, like you said, we take it a day at a time and practice. And then we take it a, a game at a time. So for the most part, we just want to we just wanna go out there and win. And we know that's the biggest thing this year is to win games and try to get that number one seat. 
with with this game specifically, I mean, it it, it started like you know, both teams kind of turning the ball over, mm-hmm. kind of ugly. Take take us you know, I'm watching that play because it didn't start well for you. Yeah. You know, we'll start with the bad because things obviously turned around and we had gender reveals and you kind of took the world by storm today. Um, but that that play, I was rewatching it. I mean. That linebacker is coming, like, coming hell bent for election to cream you. I, I think I would, I would have definitely just given the ball to the other team myself. Well, take, take us through that first turnover. Um, so I ran the under route and Josh he threw it, and I didn't see the guy pull out. Like I was just looking at Josh. I'm looking at Josh, and the ball's coming, and I go to put my hands out, and it hits my arm, and it hits my arm. I tried to clinch it, and next thing you know, there's a dude next to me with his arms open, and he grabbed it away, and I'm like. And it was just like a free play. And then uh, Chad Hall, the receivers coach, he was like, hey, don't worry about it. It was a free play. I'm like, there's no way. I thought I had it. But it hit my arm. I I don't know. I thought I had it. It hit my arm. I tried to clinch it. He grabbed it, fell over. And I'm like, you know what? It is a free play. (laughs) Freak play. Freak play. I'm not going to blame that on me. No. When your coach says that, you're off the hook, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not your fault. And But I did. I texted Josh this morning. I said, Man, my bad on that route. He goes, let it go. I'm like, I can't. I was like, it was tough because I'm like, he's throwing me the ball and I'm always like somewhat reliable with him, you know? So, yeah, yeah I, I always wonder that because in the moment you see Josh Allen and he's, you know, he's, he's ticked, you know, it's, it's a turnover. Yeah. But like, I imagine you get back to the sideline and, and you guys have been teammates since 2018. Uh-huh. Is, is it a short conversation like that? Yeah, it's just like, let it go. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But when we, if, I think of it like this. If we win the game, nobody made it, like, nobody messed up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm pretty sure he thinks the same way, you know, when, when it comes to if we win the game, hey, we'll get past it, we'll learn from it, and then go on to the next week. And what went through my mind is like, here, for months on end, you've been like busting your butt. Mm-hmm. To get into that position. Yeah. I mean, you've been, you know, we can laugh about, you know, all the pranks you pull and your feud with Micah Hyde and the Nick, but, you know, you work as hard as anybody in that locker room. Mm-hmm. So it's like you put in this work, you get in that moment, America's yeah. watching. Like, psychologically, how do you just kind of keep cool? Like, all right, can't, can't get too high, can't get too low here. Um, I would say for the most part, I just like, I thought about it as like if the ball was in my hands, it wouldn't have been taken away from me. It was kind of like a free play. You know, it hit my arm, he grabbed the ball, and I couldn't get my hands back on it. But I know when the ball's in the air, it's usually mine. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, football comes with its ups and downs. I didn't say I was going to be perfect, you know, but, you know, it started off, that started off rough, but it's all right. It's kind of a microcosm of, of your career. Yeah. When you think about it, you know, you go all the way back to, to Denver when they give up on you and you work through that mentally to get to Buffalo and to get to this point. I imagine anything pops up, you're probably not yeah. going to wallow in self-pity at this point. Not too phased on it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I just go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? And especially the, it's, it happened in the first quarter. We got three more quarters. Anything, anything else can happen. So, you know, so, I mean, it was four turnovers. I mean, so. The touchdown. Mm-hmm. Give us the route. The, the moment, did you know the ball was coming? Um, what, what, what went into the first touchdown of uh, your 2022 season? Um, they just called the play. You know, I didn't know it was coming to me. I thought it was, uh, I, thought, I thought it would be going to somebody else, you know. But the corner had outside leverage. Or the nickel had outside leverage. The safety was over the top. It was kind of like a double team type deal. But the nickel, he was too wide when I released. So I just broke in. And it was just like an easy, you know, touchdown. Man, that, so much goes into just how you think through a play. Like, mm-hmm. I think there's probably a lot of people that think, oh, you call a play in the huddle uh-huh. and you're going to run this route. Yeah. But it, it, your slot position, how much of it is just read and react and your route could just change, like you just said? Yeah, um, my route was an option route. And you know, the, we knew the Rams played a lot of off coverage. And theirs was kind of like off in that red zone. And that... At that moment, it was off man. So he was playing me outside leverage, and he had a safety in with inside help. So I guess they were communicating. I don't know. But when I released, he, the nickel, he widened out, and I just broke in. I had the b- option to break out and break in, and it was just like, I'm breaking in. I'm not going to take the hard route. You know, yeah. so pretty. I mean, do you see 33 there? Like, there, there's yeah, safety. Yeah, I saw 33. It was right there. Like, I, 
kind of like the, the, the play before, mm-hmm. it looks like he might just take you out. Well, I saw 33 uh, right before the snap, and All he right, was over the top. told me we got to move this mic up a little. There we go. All right, hello? Uh, <laughs> I saw 33 right before the snap, but I also saw number two outside of me. So I'm like, okay, if I beat number two, Josh is definitely throwing this ball. And maybe I can make up for the interception. But um, no, <laughs> I saw that, ran the slant, and 33 came down. He missed, and I just scored. As the smallest player on the team, I think you're still the smallest guy on the team, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any concern that you might just get decapitated in that situation? Because 33 was right there. No. It looks like he might be, you know, rolling downhill in a hurry. No, I wasn't really worried about it too much. You don't don't get worried about getting hit? I've been hit harder, so. And he he missed, so apparently he didn't want to hit me. What's that? I said he missed, so he didn't want to hit me in the first place. I was going to say, he didn't hit you. (laughs) He was was scared of you. (laughs) Yeah, maybe you were going to give him the business there. No, I couldn't even see. I just had the ball in my hands, and I knew he was behind me somewhere. So, The, the gender reveal. Ah. So we all, after <laughs> Isaiah scores this touchdown, you know, you're right in the camera, and you're yelling. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even know what you were saying at first, but it was, it's a boy. Yeah. You're screaming it. None of us at home really know what's going on. <laughs> so I guess unless you've lived under a rock, you know that it was a gender reveal. And gender reveals are typically terrible, right? I yeah. mean, they're, they're usually pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> they usually end horribly. Somebody gets injured, and they're just not fun and self-serving. But this was I've fun. Never, I've never been to a gender reveal before. <laughs> no, that was your first one? Yeah. You don't, you don't have any children? No. Oh, that's right. Okay. Just Poppy. Just the pit bulls. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How's Poppy doing? He's doing good. He's doing pretty well. That's He's good. trained up. One years old now. So. Wow. Trained. That's yeah. right. So what went into the gender reveal? Take take us from like point A to mm. the touchdown. Um. All of that. So this. What it was in August, July, July. Probably like four months ago. Yeah. Four months ago, she found out she was pregnant. Your, your sister. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? We, I went into camp. Right before I went to camp, um, she, they were trying to figure out the gender. And I was like, okay, just give me the envelope. I'll look at the gender, and I'll tell you when we play the Rams. She's like, what do you mean you're going to tell me when we play the Rams? I was like, I'm going to score, and I'm going to do it. So this is like... <laughs> <laughs> so... So th- this, this was your idea. It's my idea, yeah. yeah. I didn't know how successful it was going to be, but I said it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I was in camp, and I was like, okay, well, in order for me to score just now, I have to, like, win the starting job for the slot role. And I was thinking all of this, like, okay, this is how I'm going to do it or whatever. So I was just performing. And she was like, oh, maybe you can do it in preseason. And I was like, I might, I might not play in preseason. And she goes, why not? And I was like, well... If I'm a starter, I might not play. And I didn't play. So um, going on fast forward, um, she said, okay, when are we going to do this? And I'm like, I'm going to do it against the Rams. So I'm going to score and I'm going to do it against the Rams. She was like, what if you don't score? And I was like, well, I guess you got to wait till next game. So um, I was going to say, like, she's probably wondering, how long are we going to wait on this, right? <laughs> yes, that's what she was thinking. So I was like, all right, don't worry about it. I got it. I got it from here. And um yeah, so the game the game comes, which is yesterday, and I didn't think about it. So I was supposed to write "It's a boy" on my shirt and then lift my shirt up if I scored, but I forgot. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I go into the game. I I forget though. I forget I even have a gender reveal like ready. So I score. When I score, I celebrate a little bit, and I didn't celebrate too much. I was gonna dance, but then I thought about. It. I was like, oh wait, I have to say it's a boy. But I, I didn't see a camera in front of me, and then I looked to the right. I turned around to the right, and the camera was right there. So I was like, okay, this is my time. So I said it. And then when I said it, everybody was like, yo, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You'll figure it out tomorrow. And so we got on the plane, and then people started asking me. They was like, yo, did you? You having a kid? And I'm like, no, I'm not having a kid. He was like, so why did you say it's a boy? And I was like, my sister's having a kid. She was like... No, not she. But everybody was like, yo, that's the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> Who's saying that? All my teammates. So, like, they're like, that's the dumbest thing ever. Because, obviously, me being a jokester, that's like, that's stupid. 
I'm like, no, it's not. So this morning I wake up and everything's going viral. So I was like, yeah, so thanks to my dumb teammates, it wasn't that dumb. Exactly. Give it up for Isaiah. <laughs> But nobody, nobody was like, like, no, like, did she, she, they was like, did she even watch the game? I'm like, yes, they watched the game. Everybody was watching the game. Your, sis, your sister was busy last night. She couldn't fit it in. Yeah, I'm like, she was watching the game. She the one set up the whole, the whole thing. Well, she didn't set up the whole thing. She's just like, okay, everybody met at one spot yeah. in Miami, and they were watching the TV, and it happened. But like everybody else was like, my team was just like, yo, like, is she even watching the game? Like, it's late over there. Like, how? And I was like, don't worry about it. She's watching. So it was it, it was awesome because you know most I, I'm all for touchdown celebrations. We've huh. talked about it. Like just let guys be themselves. Yeah. But usually it's you know a chance to put your, the, the spotlight on yourself. Yeah. I mean you go back to what Joe Horn with the cell phone playing that in the yeah. at the goalpost and T O signing stuff. It's just it was different. It was it was unique. We've yeah. never seen that before. It was great. Yeah. I I didn't think it was gonna happen, but it happened. So. Very good. What did she say? What did your sister say? Oh, she was happy. I didn't talk to her because I was on a plane for five hours. So I talked to her this. I didn't talk to her this morning. Well, I'll talk to her eventually. But um, <laughs> yeah, when I talked to her, she'd probably be happy. She was texting me, but I was on a plane. I was tired. I mean, to to, to mentally transition though, like you're thinking about the the route you have to run, the mm -hmm. option route, and you're in the heat of the moment. That's that's got to be tough to just rewire things in your head. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. Gender reveal. Let's go. Yeah, because. And when I, when I threw the ball, I was going to start dancing, and then I was like, oh, I can't. And I was like, I got to find a camera, and I hope the camera's somewhere. And then I turned around, and it was right there. But if I knew if I was started dancing, I would have forgot. I would have totally <laughs> forgot. That's great. Well, he's going to have, uh, I mean, that, that's a story he'll have for the rest of his life now. Yep. Man. And then you guys just proceeded to run away with everything mm. that... Man, did, did you just know that was inevitable offensively to do what you did to the Rams? We knew we could score points. We knew we had the pieces and everything like that, but we didn't know how the game was going to play out, especially, you know, with four turnovers in the first half. You know, so we was just like, uh-oh, well, we got to figure it out. And um, that's what happened. We figured it out. Um, for the most part, we knew we had the pieces. We knew we had Josh. We knew we could put up points, and we did it. You know what I'm saying? And our defense came to play yesterday, so that was awesome. What stood out most to you? I mean, we saw we see Josh stiff arming people. Oh, yeah. We see Von Miller doing what you know he's paid to do, just blowing things up. Devin Singletary. I mean, there's so many different plays, so many different moments. T to you, like what really stood out with this statement win? Um, I would say the D line. The D line stood out. I was like, because. I knew we had good D linemen, you know what I'm saying? And then add Vaughn, and then Greg in the second year, AJ Epinesa, and Ed Oliver, you know, Tim Settle, uh, Jordan Phillips, like all those guys coming together, that was awesome. To have like, what was it, eight sacks? Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. I, I, I've been here for years and I haven't seen that. That was the first time I was like, oh man, we got a good defense. <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, that, that that definitely stands out because that's what you have to do in the playoffs, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yep. Patrick Mahomes was a little too cozy back there, so yeah. you got to get after these guys when it matters. That's the team that just won the Super Bowl. I mean, as an offensive player, you got you got to love that. Love you know, it. Just give the ball right back to you. But what about Stephon Diggs? <laughs> Character. Um, nah, Stephon, he's that's him. You know, he he talks a lot of stuff, and last night he was on one. So that was, but that's always him, you know, and I was happy for him because he went through the whole game and he caught the ball, you know, he, he, he did everything well. He ran, ran routes, caught the ball, scored a touchdown, you know, being himself, you know, he didn't get upset, he didn't get mad, he just did his job, played his role, and it worked out for him. Because behind the scenes, people don't know, you, you're mm -hmm. kind of his... Babysitter. I, babysitter, yeah. I was, I was going to say in-game therapist, but babysitter. Yeah, but yeah, in-game therapist, baby, same thing. Um, <laughs> nah, but and he's why awesome. Why is that? Because he's got a lot of, yeah, he's got he a lot got, of juice. He got a lot of juice, and he, and he doesn't know when to turn it off. Like yesterday, it was hot inside the stadium, and I was like, why is it so hot? But like, we were sweating, and he was so hyped. I'm like, bro, you got to chill. <laughs> got to chill, because we got like four quarters. We ain't even, like, we're in warm-ups right now. And he chilled out, and then the game came. He was hyped up again, and then Jalen Ramsey started talking, and they, and I was like, uh-oh. 
There it goes. And then he started cramping up. And I was like, oh, we're going downhill. And he was like, I got to chill out. I got to chill out. I was like, yeah, chill out. Just sit down somewhere. And next thing you know, he turns around and starts talking to people in the crowd. I'm like. I love that. <laughs> I don't even he, know what he, what he was saying. Like, what, uh, what was he saying? A lot of curse words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that's what a team needs. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's you what the Bills like just haven't had for so many years. Yeah. You need somebody that's going to talk, that's going to back it up. Because, so, I mean, everybody watched the game. But Jalen Ramsey in the end zone, the, the one good play he had. It was a, it was a rough night uh, for yeah. Jalen. It was yeah. a rough night. Yeah. Uh, but he poked the ball out. and I don't he, even think he touched it. He didn't think, even touch I it? I think no. it was, the ball was, like, too fast for Diggs that he didn't catch it. But I don't think he even touched it. Yeah, I so think we he just went through. Yeah, we shouldn't give him credit for yeah, that. Yeah, but no. yeah. But the, the, uh, somebody had pad his stats. You know? Somebody had give him a stat for it. You're right, because I, th- I think Josh was going to run, and then it was just he kind of got rid of it quick. Yeah, Josh really wanted to score on him, so wanted Diggs to score on him. So it was even when he threw the goal ball, Josh could have ran for the first down, but he waited and waited and waited and threw it. So I think Josh really wanted to throw that pass. Yeah. But it, it was great. So, you know, the, the camera zooms in on Jalen Ramsey after this play, <laughs> and he's talking. He's wagging the Dikembe Mutombo finger, and – it's great because then you see Stefan Diggs' reaction uh-huh. and he's laughing. Uh-huh. Because, you know, I mean, it's like the J.C. Jackson stuff a couple years ago. We kind of do that in practice. We kind of, like, practice that without practicing it. Like, like we'll torture, like, Jordan Porter. Like, we score on him in practice. We'll, like, all come around him and start celebrating. And he gets mad. Or, like, Taron Johnson or Micah Hyde. Like we'll, like, we'll score on him in practice and we'll, like, like pesterize him. You know, and that's what kind of what we do. Like, me, Diggs, and Gabe kind of, like, you know, talks mad. And then Josh, when he gets going, like, he comes, he gets involved too. So, so it's kind of like we're, you, like we're used to doing that to people. He had the last laugh, safe to say. Yeah. In this, in this matchup, I think I got the numbers right here. Ram- Ramsey allowed a perfect passer rating. Uh-huh. 158.3. Uh, six completions, 124, 124 yards, two touchdowns. And uh, Diggs let him have it in the end zone. So yeah, a rough day. Yeah. Was it? Was there something personal between those? Was he getting out no, for that matchup? At I don't. All? No, I don't think so. And I didn't think he would, you know, play him man to man the whole. Well, not man to man the whole game, but be on his side the whole game. Yeah. You know, I usually Jalen Ramsey's in the boundary. They play a lot of off zone, and but I guess Jalen Ramsey got you know tired of it and was like, hey, I got him, and he didn't have him. So. Are, are players aware of what um, Jalen Ramsey said to GQ back in 2018? What did he say? I think Allen is trash. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't care what yeah. nobody say. He's trash. And it's going to show, too. That's a stupid draft pick to me. Jalen Ramsey on Josh Allen in 2018. Yeah. But that's, that's, It didn't work out. It's Jalen Ramsey, you know. He yeah. just talks back, and that's it is, it is what it is, you know. That's what corners got to do, right, to get themselves going? Yeah. Of course. Do you think that motivate, motivated Josh Allen at any point? Like stuff, no. Because obviously Jalen Ramsey's not alone. Yeah. I mean, there's probably guys. a lot of fans here that might have been tweeting. St- everybody, there's a lot of people upset that they didn't take Josh Rosen back in the day. Right? It's fun to go back and look. But does he use any of this stuff? I don't think so. I think Josh at this point is just having fun, and he wants to win. And he wants to bring Buffalo a Super Bowl. So for the most part, that's what we all want to do. And we're, we're going to back Josh up. So... No matter what nobody says about Josh, he's putting out, he's making a statement. He made a statement last night, so. Yeah, it kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. But as a professional athlete, do you, do you look for exterior motivation? Because no, not at this point. Not on this team. It's really? Like we, we know what we can do. We know what we have. We just got to put the pieces together and let's keep the train rolling. And I feel like this year, you know, I feel like 2020 was a great year. 2020, like we had an amazing year. But now... After last night, I'm like, this year can be even better than 2020. So we'll see. Because uh, you, go, you go through 13 seconds, and for, I, I know there are a lot of people that were here for that episode, our last one. Uh-huh. I mean, I, Isaiah, you, you took everybody through the emotions mm-hmm. of that game, that moment. I mean, you can go one of two directions as a team. You can Seattle Seahawks, Russell Wilson interception at the goal line. Uh-huh. That team just kind of falls apart after that. Mm-hmm. They just, they're not the same. And he's not even there anymore. And mo- the whole team's pretty much broken up. Boy, you can go, God, I don't even know if there's a football. Like, the San Antonio, you're a basketball guy. Like, the Spurs and the Heat. Remember Ray Allen hits that three? Yep. The Spurs had the trophy at the court. 
and they lose that in just heartbreaking fashion. And yet they somehow, 82 games, get back to that moment, win the, win the championship. I, you can go one of two directions after a, a rough playoff loss. Mm -hmm. How have you guys kind of processed that game? I mean, we haven't really seen anything like that in the sport. Is um, it, do you, I mean, do you, com do you completely forget about it, or do you use it in some way? No, nah, we just forget about it. We know what we need to do next time. You know, we got, we got some pieces now. Von Miller, and Jordan Phillips came back. Shaq Lawson came back, and I feel like you know we got J Jamison Crowder. I've, we we got more pieces now, and we just add you know pieces to our puzzle, and that's all we need. And we just forget all what happened last year and go into this year with a new mindset. So let's I mean let's bring it back to you and how you got to this point. Then, yeah. Because that that episode. I'm going to be honest, I, I thought that was our last one. It <laughs> seemed like Isaiah McKenzie, Bill Belichick is way too smart. He's going to go sign Isaiah McKenzie because mm -hmm. you, 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 <laughs> you destroyed him in Foxborough, and you decided to stay in yeah. Buffalo. I don't know if you want to tell, did you have other offers? Did you have other options? Like, there seven, take, take us through that decision. There were seven other teams, and I told my agent, I said, hey, I, just, I want to stay in Buffalo, you know, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, if the money was a little bit more than, you know, the money over here, then I would have did what I had to do. But at the same time, I wanted to be in Buffalo. And, you know, so it wasn't that hard of a decision. It was just like, okay, well, what kind of money can you give me at this point for right now? And let's make it work. And then we'll worry about the future later. So I wanted to be here, and I'm here. So Seven teams. Yeah. Do you want to rattle those teams off for us here? Patriots. Dolphins, Detroit, Chicago, the Browns, here, uh, Arizona. Could, could you have gotten more money elsewhere, or was everything pretty even? Uh, I could have gotten more money elsewhere. Man, Why did, so you didn't want to take the money? No, hell no. I want to, go, I want to stay here. Why? Uh, I like being here. You know, I've been here for years. Um, I watched this team grow. I've grown with the team. Um, I watched Josh grow. Um, I've watched guys come and go. I feel like now, you know, we've built something good here. And I want to keep that going. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to go nowhere else and have to rebuild, you know. So. It. I mean, it, it, it is so true. I mean, you came in 2018, 6-10 yeah. and 10 season. Nobody knows how this is going to end, how it's going to go. I mean, you've really been a part behind the scenes of building it up. How would you describe your role in, in, in trying to, you know, climb that mountaintop and, and you know, you know be, beyond a, a slot receiver role? You know what I mean? We can get into that. But behind the scenes, what are you doing culturally that maybe people don't see? Um, I don't know. I'm just, I guess just being myself, you know, uh, off the field, just being who I am, just being the guy that I am, being, you know what I'm saying, just trying to be a good person. And that's what I try to do each and every day, you know, whether it's in the locker room or just outside at the house. You know, I, I feel like I live my life the right way, the best way I can. You know, I make mistakes, but who doesn't? So for the most part, I just stick to my morals and values and go from there. Is, is it hard to turn down more money? Like, yeah. I think all of us in all of our professions, it's like, oh, they're going to gonna pay me this and they're going to pay me that. You know what I mean? Like, it, is, it is hard to turn down more money. But I feel like, I don't know, like, I got enough. <laughs> I got enough for me, I guess. The barbecue business is doing well, too. Yeah, right? yeah. And, I mean, money's not everything to me, obviously. You know, so, you know what I'm saying? I, I prefer to be here than to go somewhere else and make more money. Um, for me, it's like, like I said in an interview, like loyalty, you know, um, being in McDermott, they've been loyal to me, you know, they, they brought guys in, they, they kept me, um, they built me up, you know what I'm saying, they, they gave me, you know, roles on this team, they gave me a role, I made myself a role, and then now we're here, you know what I'm saying, as a starting receiver, and I felt like they gave me the opportunity to do that, and I just, you know, got to take advantage of it, and for the most part, they've been loyal to me, that's how I feel about it, so I'm going to be loyal to them. I know because they're, you, you, you could have gone the other direction. Yeah. I mean, you could have said, I'll say it, 
Hell, you, you made me a scapegoat against the Colts. It's not like you're a defensive tackle trying to tackle Jonathan Taylor. You were, I mean, we got into it on the show yeah. last year. I mean, when you, when you were benched, like, you didn't know. You thought you were done, yeah. possibly, right? I mean, it was a dark time yeah. that you thought your Bills career could have been over. Uh-huh. And lo and behold, all these receivers get COVID. They got no other choice but to play Isaiah McKenzie, and yeah. Isaiah McKenzie does the rest against the Patriots. So you, you could have thought, like, Screw you guys. Yeah. I'm going to go to somebody who actually believes in me. But it, it, it seems like it maybe ran a little deeper for you, that loyalty that you're talking about. Yeah. I Just not even just upstairs, just the players, you know, right. going into the locker room and being with those guys and seeing that we all love one another and play for one another. That's, you know, that's what I want. And I feel like each and every year we got better and better, you know, just off us being just us, you know, showing each other love, celebrating each other's success and I want to do it for those guys, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I still want to be here. And I want to see, I said it the other day, I was like, I'm probably going to be here longer than McDermott. <laughs> probably not, but. You never know. You never, you know. never know. But, you know, but that's how I think about it. That's how, how much I like being here, so. That, that says a lot, man. I mean, to, I, mean I think all, all of us who have, grew, have grown up here, maybe we move away, but you, you find your way back. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like Isaiah McKenzie. You had other options to, to leave Buffalo. Are you still living in the hotel, by the way? Yeah. Still living <laughs> in the hotel? Yeah. How's hotel life? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, so, like, now that I'm in a relationship now, Ooh. so, like... Very, so, we're going public here. This is breaking news. <laughs> Isaiah McKenzie is a, a taken man. Um, it sucks because now I got to move out of the hotel. <laughs> What's that? I got to move out of the hotel. Oh, you're, you're moving out? Yeah, she's making me move out of the hotel. She said she can't do it. Uh, compromise. Were you racking up, like, uh, points, too? Like- yeah, now I, now I have three million points. Wow. Yeah. That's a tough call. You know, this relationship's going really well, but I keep getting these points at this hotel. It's free, it's free, but, like, so when I use my points, they give me more points. Oh. And then, like, I thought about that, too, like, she wants me to move out, but it's free, and I get points. Like, I was like, you don't like being here? It's free. <laughs> like, we get points. So, like, free, if we do it's vac- free, and you get points. And we go on vacation, it's free. it'll be easier. We don't have to use no money. She goes, I can't do this. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> That's, that says a lot. That's a big moment in your relationship, that you're yeah. willing to, you know, bite that bullet and, you know, cap off those points. Yeah. Free vacations, though, now with her. That's pretty nice. Yeah. We'll see. Before I forget, though, like, like not to, to get all serious, but tell people here, like, how did you work through that hard moment when things could have gone south and you thought, like, what was going through your head when you didn't even know if you were going to keep playing for the Bills when you were benched? And how did you get out of that to, to, to eventually get to this point where you're the starting slot receiver? Um, like I said, I just kept being me, you know? Came to work every day, practice, you know, showed... Um, guys the way the young guys the way and just like I said be myself for the most part I'm saying I don't know I don't even know how to describe it like being in that I wouldn't even call it a dark place like I was like still me really I wasn't depressed unhappy it was nothing I was still me and I guess that's what got me through a lot of things you know just go home going to, going to the hotel if not home Going to the hotel every day, you know, eating Chick-fil-A, watching TV, playing video games with my teammates, talking to my teammates, coming to work, watching film, taking notes, going to practice, showing them what I got, showing them that I'm still Isaiah McKenzie, and you know what I'm saying? I'm not going anywhere. So when the opportunity did come, I seized it, and now we're here, you know? So. Man. And they, I imagine they gave you that opportunity, like when you're negotiating, like, you, you have, you're going to have a shot to win this job. Well, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. They signed James Crowder, and he's pretty good. What, what, what went through your mind when you saw that? I when mean, they he's did, been a proven dude. When they did that, I said, yeah, I knew it wasn't going to just be handed to me, and I was fine with that. I'm like, I'm fine with everything else. You know, so um, we go to camp, and I ball out. He's, he's performing well. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, he got, I think he hurt his hamstring. Right. And I just kept going. You know, I didn't think about anything else. I didn't think about who was behind me, who was in front of me, when I'm going to get in, when I'm going to get out. I just kept performing. And, and what do you think you really give this team on the field? It's, I think you're, 
we might see your size and think, oh, he's just kind of going to be mm-hmm. operating in a phone booth and jet sweeping around. But that New England game, and we saw it at training camp too, you're running routes down the field. Mm-hmm. Josh Allen trusts you. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to your role in this offense, wh- what are you going to bring the Bills this season, you think? Um, the whole thing, you know, the underneath routes, over the top, taking the top off. I feel like I'm fast enough. I'm faster than most to take the top off. I'm quicker than a lot of people that's, you know, in the slot position. I mean, in the nickel position. So everything that, you know, want, and we're going to still put jet sweeps in there, put me in the backfield and whatnot, and just play football. I mean, Cole Beasley got a lot of targets. Yeah. Is, there, is it weird not having him around? Because you were with um, him for a I while. I talk to him here every now and then. But um, is it weird? Um, I guess so. Because I'm so used to, like, when they're like, oh, ones are up, or starters. I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> so, I'm like, so when I go out there on the field, and then I'm like, yep, yeah, I guess this is how bees feel. It's, it seems like you've learned a lot from him, too, yeah. because it's, it's not like you're just going up and running around, like we said. Yeah. How difficult is it to read a defense and know man versus zone? How, how, what what kind of goes into that that job that that Cole did so well that you've kind of mastered yourself? Um, being in the slot, you got to because you got a lot of option routes. You got to break in, break out, sit down. And for example, we played the Rams. They play a lot of zone because they got a good D line. So all they got to do is keep their eyes on the quarterback. And we had routes where we thought it was man, and it wasn't. It was zone, but the way they played it. It was, it, was, it was played well. So we just had to adjust at halftime, like, hey, like this is what they're doing in zone. They're making it look like man, so run a route like this. You know what I'm saying? Coming from Josh, or coming from Gabe, or coming from Diggs, or coming from myself. And we saw that, and we switched things up a little bit. Me and Josh had a conversation on the sideline. We run, we run option route, choice routes, and he was like, hey, this is zone. It looks like man, but let's try to sit outside. So later in the game, I started sitting outside, and open it up in the middle for other guys. But um, it's pretty difficult in there, you know? That's got to be unbelievably difficult because it's like you watch on TV and you think, why is that cornerback just kind of standing there? Yeah. I mean, it's because they're trying to fool you. Like, they're yeah. trying to make you think it's man or zone and it's the other way around. And it, 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 it was 10-10 at halftime, and then you guys just blew them out of the water. Was mm-hmm. that a big reason why? Um, I would say... The biggest reason was we didn't have any turnovers in the second half. I don't think, right? No. So in the second half, it was no turnovers. And all we said was protect the ball. We protect the ball, we win the game. Because we got, we got a high-powered offense and we got a very good defense. So we protect the ball, we, we win the game. Is there anything that can stop this offense? Um, What's the mentality? Because it just seems like when you guys get going, it doesn't really matter. I feel like we're just having fun. You know, it's not really... What we're doing is how we're doing it. You know what I'm saying it's like okay, yeah, we have a negative play here, but the next play we want to make it a positive play. You know, yeah, we may have an interception, but hopefully the defense gets gets it back. And if they get it back, we're gonna score. But we're just out there having fun and playing football. You know, we're not thinking about you know what happened in the last play. We just we're in the now. So I feel like that's why we were so good last night because we were in the now. Like okay, we know things are gonna happen. That's that's a part of football. The Titans. Yeah. I mean, they kind of have your number. They do. You get touchdowns, call back. Yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah. That one cost you a few Definitely would have been out of here. Yeah. You, you guys own one, right? Like it's... We own one. Yeah. And I feel like now it's a different, it's a different story. It'll be, it'll, be a, it'll be a different story. But um, like I said, we got to take it a day at a time and wait till Sunday. I mean, Monday. Yeah. What, and, and we're going to open it up to some questions here like we always do for sure, but um, what was it like, though, inside of SoFi? Because, I mean, Matthew Stafford, the Rams quarterback, yeah. is talking about having to do a silent count, which is insane. They just won the Super Bowl. They're literally unveiling the banner. It should be packed with whoever teams, fans that is. Yeah. But then you got, you know, Los Angeles, you've got... You know, a bunch of nonsense out there outside of football. They, they don't really care about football in L.A. Also. Yeah. They don't care. Yeah. And, and then you got Buffalo, where people eat, sleep, breathe, bleed the Buffalo Bills. Was it as Bills-heavy inside the stadium? as It, it felt as like it. It was awesome. The atmosphere was great. And the stadium was awesome. I didn't think um, we would have that many fans because, obviously, it's L.A. 
it just won the Super Bowl. So you think everybody would want to come to the game in L.A. But, you know, Bill's fans snuck in there and <laughs> made some noise. So that was awesome. And Bill, Bill's Mafia always travels well, so I didn't expect nothing less. False starts and silent counts for a home team that just won the Super Bowl is it's, it's pretty insane. Yeah. So we'll see. All right. Uh, you guys always ask some pretty awesome questions. So if, if you have anything to ask, just, you know, raise your hand. We'll find you. We'll make it happen. It's all about you. I don't think they can hear you. Yeah. And so I'll just, I'll just say it on here, too, for people listening. Like, question on, on Ken Dorsey, how he called his first game. Because, yeah, like you just said, the, the, the rhythm, the timing, everything was incredible. Um, he did a great job. You know, he called the play. He let his players play. He wasn't scared to call anything. You know, he wasn't scared to, you know, just call it and let us play football. And I feel like he was very loose. He wasn't tight. Yeah. I, I mean... We saw what happened, so I think he did well. You, I mean, you grew up in, in Miami. Did, yeah. you, did you watch his teams? No, I did, did not, no. You didn't? No, you, were, did you were literally too young? I wasn't really a Miami fan. You weren't? No. Who did you like? Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, okay. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was a big deal, man. That's yeah, I know he was. I know. Does he let you know? Does he, does he relive those days? No, nah, but I can tell he's a little crazy because he is a little crazy. Like is he's, he? Yeah, so... I can tell he was a man, you know what I'm saying? Because obviously he has stories, you know, from, you know, back in that time, which is ancient. But, um, <laughs> he, he, he's, how is he crazy, though? He yells a lot. He yells, he yells a lot. He does? Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't expect that. Just but he doesn't yell at us, he yells for us. Okay. So, like, he gets mad at other people for us. Like, if somebody gets tackled in practice, he's yelling at the defense. Like, I can't say what he says, but. You know, like he's he's always up and up and at it, and we like him. We love him for that. Was Dave all like that? Yeah, Dave was like that too. But like, Dave's had to like keep it at a minimum because he was a little mm -hmm. like high blood pressure, and you know, he was like yeah, a lot of beers. Yeah, I, I would think that you know playing in national championship games, huge moments, huge games, like. I mean, with the personalities that Ken Dorsey had around him, that, that's all got to help in, in an NFL locker room to deal yeah. with. Yeah. No, no yeah. yeah. I think Ken Dorsey's the guy for the job. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can tell him to get you the ball right now if you, if you want, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions out there? Just raise your hand and here's one right here. You know what? Do we have a... Do we have a mic? Do we have a, an extra mic, by chance? Extra? Look, they're just having a conversation. They don't even know that we need a mic. That's it? I said, he doesn't even know we need a mic. Oh, I know. Mic? Give a mic. One second. We're going to get another mic so we can travel. Two, 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 right. two. There we go. Who had the question? Right, right here. John, we can put you to work. We'll have you uh, migrate around. Thank you. My question is, who's the worst dancer on the team? Uh, mm, the worst dancer on the team. Oh, that's hard. I haven't seen too many people dance on the team. Oh, yes, I have. Um... From what I know, from what I've seen, saw. This is tough. 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 I'm thinking of the guys we have on our team. I don't know a lot of them. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Vaughn Miller. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like he's learning how to dance. Not He doesn't know what he's doing, but he's doing it. Are you talking post-sack? He, <laughs> um, he was on Dancing with the Stars, but I don't know if, like, I think it's because of who he was. I mean, who he is, that's why he was on there. You know? I don't think they want real dancers on Dancing with the Stars. 
Well, we're, we're definitely future episodes. We're going to get you, maybe not dancing, but we'll get you singing up here. Oh, people, man. Right? <laughs> that, that's a must because, you know, obviously everybody knows Isaiah McKenzie is a nationally renowned crooner of sorts. Yeah. In the same vein as Jim Croce and Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Who are these people? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We talked about Jim Croce <laughs> last year. Come on. I forgot. I forgot. No, no, I'm kidding. I remember, but I, I, don't, I still don't know who these people are. Croce. Croce. Well, just YouTube it. Gotcha. The voice of a god. Gotcha. All right, we definitely have more questions out there. Any more questions? Oh, yeah. Just wondering why you changed your number and why to number six. Why did you change your number? Oh, why, why did you change oh. your number? I have no reason. <laughs> I just changed it just to change it. Yeah. Six was faster. Yeah. I, 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 and then I'm going into my sixth season, I guess. Well, it's my sixth season. So I think. But no, no, no real reason. I just did it. I told everybody else I was retiring at 19, but like, obviously somebody else had it. So. Yeah, we won't go that route. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll let that one lie. <laughs> More questions out there for Isaiah McKenzie? I know there's a lot of questions. So yeah, I think everybody's here for dinner. Anybody else out there with a dying, Any, burning question? Anybody else? I thought we'd at least get a fantasy football one or two, you know? Fantasy football? I don't even know. Oh, here we go. Fantasy football. All right. If that's uh, if that's it, I think we're good. Isaiah, thanks so much for hanging out, man. Until next time. Appreciate it. And everybody, th thanks so much for coming out. We're gonna be here uh, seven more episodes. All the dates, all the times. Go along td.com here at Misters. Check out their Facebook page too, and we'll have all the episodes up on, on the site as well. So it's gonna be fun, man. Yes, it will. Ups, downs, roller coaster ride. Well, or maybe you'll just beat every team by three touchdowns, too. Uh, hopefully. We'll see. We'll see. Right, thanks a lot, Isaiah. No problem.